Hi, it's Sunday morning, July the 5th. I'm Bikuni Wimala, and you might notice I added Bikuni Wimala Terry. Terry is a part of my title now. That's That says that I've been a Bikuni for 10 years, and that was official. 2010 in June, I had my higher ordination in Sri Lanka. And it uh, seems like the 10 years has flown by, or, or that it's like another lifetime. So that's official now. Bhante Sujata was my teacher and always has been, and my uh, preceptor, he was in Sri Lanka for that, and uh, Aya Sudarshana in Florida was there, and my uh, highest level preceptor was Bikuni Kusama. So it was a big celebration, big, big group of people, and uh, kind of a terrifying experience for me. <laughs> so anyway, I'm, I, that was uh, June of 2010, so now I'm out. <laughs> so today, I feel like I haven't been here with everybody in quite a while, but it's only been a few days. Um, but it's good to be it's good to be practicing with you, and I want to start with my wish. And um, these are the little cards if you haven't seen them. Like this is one that represents, I think it's a ref. Let's see. This one is a, a sanctuary. No, a refuge for this image. It's of a an open window in an old building and a blue sky outside, and that is representative of the line, a sanctuary for those in danger. And these are the little cards I told you about. And on the back of each one is my wish. And the line that represents the photo that we chose is bold face. So we have them at the temple and now I'll, we have the French and the Spanish so we were just about to put them out at the temple and pass them around at the, all the jails where the detained immigrants are, um, the individual cards, not the packets. Just before we were closed up, uh, so I have these beautiful boxes of these uh, little bags with the cards in them just sitting, sitting in my closet. Uh, my friend Mary Jane had put them all together and packed them all and uh, they were they were the ones in French and Spanish and we had bags ready to go to the different jails and everything shut down and who knows when we'll be able to get back to visit with the people in the in the jails who are being detained but this card has it on the back and it fits right into someone's wallet or their pocket and the picture is to bring a little bit of color and a little bit of beauty into uh, a very drab, plain cell. And then it might be something that someone can just take with them when they leave and they can pull it out and just see this, uh, the image and the words and uh, think, that they're, think about the people who do care for them all over the world. So let's start with that and then it is hot today. Um, what do we call it when a woman sweats? <laughs> Little beads of dew drop on my face. So let's begin with that. May I become at all times, both now and forever, a protector for those without protection, a guide for those who have lost their way, a ship for those with an ocean to cross, a sanctuary for those in danger, a lamp for those without light, a place of refuge for those who lack shelter, and a servant for all in need. By means of this meritorious deed, may I never join with the unwise, only the wise, until the time I attain Nibbana. So, that can be how we 
approach the world and how we move out every day thinking about thinking about bringing help to those who need help and kindness to those who need kindness and I think this is what we we need to practice more and more I was talking to my teacher Bhante Sujatha last night we had a good talk on the phone and um, most of you will know that the temple's beginning to open up this week. It's kind of a test run, and it's all deter it all will be determined on keeping the numbers to to the prescribed uh, plans. And that means not that many people in the temple, and no hugging, and no uh, getting too close, and everyone has to wear masks and wear them properly. You know, there's so, there's, hopefully that won't be a problem. But uh, it's, it's exciting to see the temple opening up a little bit, but it's, it's a test to see if we can carry our mindfulness with us during the times we're there. But we were also talking about uh, impermanence and how we have to, we have to be Bhante said part of his practice right now is working with impermanence and um, what, what better thing can we be working with, right? Because we don't know. We don't know what's coming around the corner. We don't know what's going on in the future. We don't know. Uh, we, we don't know. And all of us now are once again wondering, we don't know if we're going to contract the virus or not. We don't know if we we don't know when a vaccine is uh, coming along that will feel that will make us feel completely comfortable. Uh, so we're we're working with impermanence all the time anyway. Then this pandemic has just brought that lesson I think closer to home, and has given us uh, a really significant, profound experience of okay, this is what it's all about. This is why we practice. This is what we, this is what we are, this is the way the world is. This is exactly how the world is all the time. And we, when, we're, when we've been lucky enough to be born in this country and have uh, the freedoms that we have and the, the wealth that we have, we don't see as much of it on a day-to-day -day basis. So this has been probably a very important time for all of us and we're still in it obviously we're, we're still going through it this may be the most difficult time I know it is for me it just I'm so disappointed when I see people not being willing to wear a mask when we know statistically how much safer we all are if we're wearing masks and uh, it's hard for us to step up and tell someone can you, would you please wear a mask? But we need to start doing it. We, I, I reported last week how I was upset going into a store and um, that I just didn't have the courage to chase after the person who came in without a mask. So I was frustrated with myself and couldn't find an employee. And the next day I had gone back to the store to return something and I was able to talk to a manager and she was so wonderful and gave me, you know, full attention. And she said, yeah, we have that huge sign outside and it couldn't be more obvious. And we have masks that are for sale if people need a mask when they come in that are not expensive, that they can buy right as they come into the store. But she said even the corporate offices have said, even with the state mandate that we wear a mask, that the corporate office has said, the employees are not to approach, they will, they cannot approach anyone and ask them to please put on a mask. They can't send them away. Now that's their corporate decision, but it's not, it's not really unreasonable. They're not, they don't want to pass on that, um, that job to their employees. There's probably so many good reasons for that and I could understand it, but, um, that means we all have to take personal responsibility for ourselves and 
wear a mask, please, and wear a mask if you need to take it off to get some fresh air. Don't take it off in front of the people that you're trying to protect. And uh, just look at the data that's showing us when we're both wearing masks around each other that the chances of anyone contracting the virus are just so, so, so low. So that means both parties, not just one person being careful. <clears throat> we want to make it work that, that the temple can open up. Uh, we have to be very mindful, and that's part of our practice too. So we're moving forward inch by inch, you know, day by day, and it's a good time for all of us to be digging deeper into our own personal practice. So find out what that practice is. Find out what you need to work on. I think there are two things we can look at. Think about the things in your own personal, your meditation practice, your day-to-day -day living practice, uh, how you approach things, what your self-discipline is like, what kind of effort you put into things that you want to do and accomplish. Um, but in our personal practice working with ourselves, I think we need to look at the things that we are really good at and focus on those and uh, in, enrich ourselves and use our, you know, let your light come out from under the, the bushel as we learned, I learned in Sunday school so many years ago. Let your light shine for those things that you're really good at or the things you want to do or the things that you, um, that you're most accomplished in or just most comfortable with. And then also work on the things where you think, okay, maybe there's room for improvement here. Or maybe the reason I'm not getting the result I want over here, let's back it up and see. Maybe there's a reason back here that where I'm kind of letting myself down. And if I could strengthen myself, bolster myself up back here, I think it would, you know, the natural progression of natural law is that that boost in some more basic way will help us get the results we want and see the changes in ourselves if there are any changes that we want to see. So we can, but we need to, we need to look at uh, both ends. You know, nobody's, uh, no one's perfect. We're not aiming for perfection. But if there are areas where we're struggling in our lives or we're not finding the, the, the joy in little things or we're not feeling like we're, you know, if we feel like the Buddha wondering if he needs to lead, lead the palaces to find uh, some answers to suffering, look at, your, look, at, look at your own life and just see the things that you can uh, do that make you feel happy, that make you feel good, that uh, give you, that feed your, your wholesome, skillful qualities and look at the things that you'd like to work on. Never beat on yourself, that's very counterproductive. So let's sit with the time we have remaining because that's what we all need as we go about. Now this is a holiday weekend, I don't know what your plans are, but I hope they are. I hope you're wearing a mask. And I hope if you're around your loved ones especially that you're taking care of each other that most essential way. So, and at the end of the meditation, when my time is up, you can keep practicing if you have some more minutes. Uh, and we'll, I'll finish though with my wish again. Okay, so let me know also, remember let me know if there are books that you're interested in or the kind of reading that you'd be interested in if we do a, a book group or a discussion group. It doesn't even have to be an entire book. If there are topics that you want to discuss, let me know. And um, I'm, I, I want to put out more information this week, hopefully, about how we can structure a group, a Zoom group. I'm still being all virtual. You, you, you won't see me coming back to the temple. I'm, I'm working, I'm trying to learn as much as I can about being a virtual 
online presence. <laughs> it feels safer. And it's my practice has become stronger by stepping back quite a bit. So I think I'll be continuing that. So I'm sure you're all in your comfortable spot. So you can be, if you need to be on the floor, so you can let your back feel strong and stretch out, just stay awake. And uh, you can be standing or walking. If you're sitting and you're comfortable doing it uh, and not babysitting a house full of kids, you can close your eyes. And just feel that your body is supporting your being awake. So stretch out your spine if you're sitting and allow yourself to sit up. Feel your head just resting at the top of your spine, being comfortable, being awake. Just become now focused on observing your body breathing. Just stay with your same natural breath. And just observe your body at work. By now, I hope all of us have a natural breath that's getting down into our belly so we know that our entire lungs are receiving that life-giving oxygen. We don't have to have a different breath than we have in all of our daily activities. We want this to be the way we breathe because we just are learning every day how important that, that breath is just in staying alive. And we know when we're able to let our breath go through down into our lungs, we're calming down because it's a, we only keep breathing up in the top of our chest if we're stressed out or angry or uh, fearful. And sometimes a lot of us are in that mode permanently. We don't even realize it, but we're taking shallow breaths And I think that's doing our physical bodies harm, but it's also an indication that we're like ready to run. We're waiting for the tiger to jump on us. So relax. If you need to put your hand on your belly to feel your tummy rise and fall. And you can observe your breath at that spot or observe your breath around your nostrils and above your upper lip. Just be aware of all of the sensations you're feeling when you focus on that breath. thinking you might want to count each breath and go up to five and then start over to keep your focus. Or maybe as you inhale, just be thinking beautiful breath. And as you exhale, beautiful breath. Be grateful for being alive. Be grateful for being able to breathe. that we recognize impermanence 
It's part of our training. It's part of our practice. Things change, we change, the world changes. Just focus on your breath. May I become, at all times, both now and forever, a protector for those without protection, a guide for those who have lost their way, a ship for those with an ocean to cross, a sanctuary for those in danger, a lamp for those without light, a place of refuge for those who lack shelter, and a servant to all in need. By means of this meritorious deed, may I never join the unwise, only the wise, until the time I attain Nibbana. Have a wonderful weekend. Uh, what's today? Sunday. I'll see you Tuesday morning. And. Uh, Celebrate, enjoy this holiday, but please do it with all of this impermanence in mind. Uh, do it, it doesn't have to be the same celebration that we've all done for the last, you know, 15, 20 years of our lives. It can be done, think of yourself the whole time, whoever you're celebrating with, and think of yourself as the bodhisattva in the group, and your, your pledge, your promise, is to take care of others, to be a protector for those who lack protection, and a guide for those who have lost their way. So just let that be uppermost in your thoughts as you have a beautiful holiday. This, this holiday seems to be extending to about a four or five day uh, holiday. So uh, be happy, see joy in all the little things, and Take care of yourself and others. And right now, the best way we can do that is to be putting on those awful masks and uh, figuring out a way to breathe and figuring out a way to talk through them. Don't take them off when, you're, when you want to talk to somebody. Uh, we have to really wear them properly. No nose is hanging out, okay? That, that doesn't work. <laughs> if your nose is hanging out, 
that means you're still breathing on people. Those little droplets are getting out. So if you need to bolster a busy day today, try to sit a little longer as much as you can. Oh, someone is asking the best way to send me ideas. Um, you could do it in a comment or you can send it to me. Um, I'll put I'll put my uh, email address uh, under under this. I'll, I'll add it as a comment, okay? And you can use my email address and send it to me. If you if you send it to the temple, they uh, Tessa will forward it to me. But I don't mind you using my email address. And uh, I'll you may see me at the temple, but it's not going to be for any services because I'll be doing things from home. But I'm, I'm definitely still a, a part of Blue Lotus. That's my home, right? All right. Thank you, everybody. Sit more if you can. Bye-bye.